Hey guys, it's Nick from Financially Aware and in this video I want to talk about Tesla going to $2,000 a share and the three stocks that are guaranteed 100% to be bigger than the next Tesla. So a week ago I did a video on the Tesla split when it was $1,500 a share and it was worth more than Toyota and Volkswagen combined. One week later about it's up 30% at $2,000 a share and now it's worth more than Toyota, Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz and BMW combined. Now I gotta say I've gotten religion. Uh, I learned my lesson. The way I was valuing Tesla was using that old math. It doesn't work anymore. It's that old stodgy math that people like Warren Buffett uses it, with things like you know sales, earnings, uh, market share, price to earnings ratio. You know, that stuff doesn't work anymore. This is a you know, new permanent plateau. We're in a new market now. The new math involves things like beautiful ideas, technology, electricity, being green, saving the world. You can't put a price tag on that. And if you did, the price would be around a PE of a thousand because that's where Tesla is trading at right now. Now everybody knows after the Tesla split, Tesla stock will go right back to $2,000 a share where it deserves to be because it's Tesla, right? So that's a pretty good gain. You know, if you bought it today, you're going to make five times your money. But someone like me, you know, with a $1,000 account that I think it's my right to turn into a million dollars by buying a hot stock, it's just not going to cut it by buying Tesla because I'm only going to turn $1,000 into $5,000. That's not really enough. So what are the hot stocks that are going to be the next Tesla? Well, I scoured all the most respectable secret forums in all corners of the internet and I found these three stocks that are going to take off like Tesla's rocket ship. So before I reveal these secret stocks, smash that like button real hard and I guarantee that after the Tesla split, it will go back up to $2,000 a share in exactly one week. Guaranteed. So these three secret stocks that are going to replace Tesla are Plug Power, Ballard Power, and Fuel Cell. And so I would be remiss if I didn't show you the research that went into figuring this stuff out. So I fired up the old Google, found an article on each one, and read a little bit about it, and uh, you know made my decision from there. So let's see. Plug Power. Here's an article right here. U.S. Department of Energy and in conjunction with Plug Power and Energy Department of Los Alamos have successfully demonstrated a first ever gasoline powered fuel cell electric engine for the automobile. Oh my God, that sounds awesome. The new technology will allow the automotive industry to create new fleets of vehicles that can realize up to 80 miles per gallon fuel economy with a near zero exhaust emissions. Man, I can't wait for the market to open because I'm going to load up on this thing. I think that's pretty much all we need to read on this, uh, except for this last part. The innovation heralds the next generation of engines to replace the internal combustion engine. Wow, that sounds really good. That's, that's a definite buy right there. And look at the stock prices going, going up on this recent news, I guess. Um, I'll look at the chart in a minute. Let's check out Ballard Power here. Here's an article from Bloomberg. In a white-walled laboratory spanning the length of two football fields. Hmm, that sounds a lot like Tesla. They must be trying to copy them or something. Jeans-clad engineers in their 20s and 30s working on combining hydrogen and oxygen to perfect a new kind of power plant. Instead of lighting a city, Ballard Power Systems Lab outside Vancouver is honing technology that Ford Motor Company Chairman William Ford said will end the 100-year reign of the internal combustion engine. Cleaner burning cars powered by fuel, fuel cells. Wow, this is, this is really great. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a Bloomberg account. Uh, I can't afford one, but maybe after I make money buying Ballard Power, I can afford a Bloomberg account to read the rest of this article. But 
I think we've both read enough on Ballard Power to know that it's a winner. And look at the stock chart here. So uh, that's two out of three right there. And let's go to the third one, Fuel Cell. And here's an article from thestreet.com. And uh, Jim Cramer won't steer us wrong. So let's see what he got to say. Fuel Cell, number five on the list, which enjoyed its 447% return because of the fundamental idea of finding alternatives to the traditional electric utility grid. Wow, I'm all for fundamental ideas. I think that's awesome. Uh, let's see what Merrill Lynch says. He rates fuel cell a buy, and his firm has done underwriting for the company. I'm sure that's not a conflict of interest. He just, you know, really likes fuel cell, and fuel cell has developed a more efficient way of generating electricity. Over the last year, it took some steps that brought its technology closer to commercialization. Hmm, that sounds, that sounds awesome. I don't know about you, but I think my research is done here. Three out of three strong buys in my book. So let's take a look at the charts and see how awesome this is going to be when you buy this. So here's plug power. Wow, from a from dollar to $14, that's awesome. Let's see where this thing went IPO. Let's go back a little bit more. Okay, when did it go IPO? Let's see. Oh, what? Back in 2000, it was $1,500 and now it's $13? Hmm. That's a little strange, but what about that article? Let's see, this article about how great it was. Oh, wait a minute. This article is from October 21st, 1997. Hmm. I guess they haven't done very much in 23 years. Well, I'm sure that's not the case for Ballard Power. Let's take a look at Ballard Power here. Oh, this is also good. It went from like $2 to $21. Let's see where this thing IPO'd. Oh, it's been around for 24 years or so, and it peaked out at a $140 back 20 years ago, and now it's $15. But what about that really positive article on my research? Let's look at that again. Oh, this article is from May 31st, 2000, about how great their technology is going to be. Uh, and Cleaner burning cars powered by fuel cells, once merely an environmentalist dream, are scheduled to reach showrooms in 2004. Hmm, I wonder what happened to that. All right, well, I'm sure fuel cell is fine. Let's check that out. So, okay, fuel cell maybe had a few bumps in the road. It was $20, $30, now it's $2. Let's see when that went IPO. Oh, it's been around since 93 and it peaked at close to $8,000 20 years ago in 2000 or 2001. And now it's $2.96. That's strange. What about my research article here from the street.com i mean jim kramer you know he's not going to steer you wrong oh wait this is from december 30th 2000 20 years ago so i guess all of their optimistic reports about what they're going to do didn't exactly pan out but it seems everybody bought the stock as if it did pan out and brought it to eight thousand dollars a share i mean uh, i don't know what's going on here and and uh maybe 
maybe this time is different. Maybe now at $3, it really is going to take off and do all those things it promised to do. So what happened to those stocks? Hmm. Did they have really good earnings back in 2000 when they went up to a thousand or eight thousand dollars a share and maybe their earnings declined over the years let's let's take a look here is those three stocks and here is their quarterly revenue over the years and in 2000 their revenues were like three million ten million three million a quarter now they're like 60 million, uh, 68 million, 25 million, 18 million a quarter. So, hmm, that, that story doesn't pan out. So why were they up so high and now they're so low, even if they have more revenue than they did before? Well, if it's not the revenue that made them go up in 2000 and decline now, maybe it's the net income the quarterly income so let's see back in 2000 their net income was negative something like 17 million 10 million or so negative or just break even per quarter and ballard had a quarter of being actually positive 81 million but for the rest of the time generally they lost million i mean uh Ballard Power was losing how much, 100 million here or something like that, and a few quarters later it made, but generally they're losing money every quarter, and here they are still losing money 20 years later at 8 million, 11 million, 14 million a quarter in net income. So the net income hasn't declined, it's just always been low and stayed low. So I wonder what it could be. Maybe let's look at the earnings per share. That Maybe that will tell you something. Well, this is the zero line of earnings per share. So since 2000, they've had basically zero or negative earnings per share for the whole 20 years. And these are really negative earnings per share. Fuel cell had minus $85 a share in negative earnings losses uh, that's a lot of losses uh, look at this so they're still even in these quarters now they're just break even three cents a share loss five cents a share loss so uh, question how do these companies stay in business all these years if they have very little revenue and they're losing money every quarter and and huge earnings per share losses. Uh, well, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, I see. This is <laughs> this is what they're in the business of. They're in the business of selling stock. Back here in 2000, they had four million shares outstanding, 90 million shares outstanding, 0.17 million shares outstanding and they've sold more and more stock in the open market to fund their their losses all of these years to the point where now they have a few hundred million shares outstanding each of them and that's how they're still around all this time even though they're still losing money okay so yeah they have very little revenue they've lost money every quarter going back 20 years and they've diluted their shareholders by million, hundreds of millions of shares over 20 years so that they can stay in business. But that doesn't mean you should overlook these stocks. I'm sure they're doing great things. And, you know, we got the green revolution here. So why not take a shot? Maybe, maybe now is the time. You know, the last 20 years wasn't good, but maybe now once you buy it, they'll really start to take off and really uh, catch up to Tesla. Who knows? I mean, crazier things have happened, right? So now you know what stocks will make you rich. And all you have to do is ignore that huge run up 20 years ago, the tiny revenue, the years of huge losses, and issuing hundreds of millions of new shares of stock. Um, that's all irrelevant. 
It's the idea that matters. And to all the doubters who think these are just three hyped up stocks from 20 years ago that had their run up from the day traders of the day that also overpriced them kind of like they're doing now to Tesla, I'll say to you this, okay? Those day traders back then, they're different from the day traders today. I mean, those guys back then, they traded on desktops with big bulky CRT monitors, wearing weird striped shirts and stuff like that. Day traders today are completely different, okay? They trade on a phone or a laptop, totally different thing, okay? This time is different. And even if it isn't different, at least you will lose all your money knowing that you bet it on a really nice idea. And that's what really matters, doesn't it?